κατανόηση για τον Αιγυπτιακό στρατό, αν αποτελείται κυρίω από κληρωτού ή μιλάμε για επαγγελματικό στρατό. Yes, it's a ναι, είναι ένα στρατό στο δικό μα κληρωτό. They were waiting to see what is the, what's going to be their position. Is it like this, or are they, are they in fact uh, supporting the Egyptian army? The, American, the U.S. government. Um, my personal opinion is that um, you know the, the United States administration has very important and historic ties to the Egyptian army. Um, the, the U.S. military aid package to Egypt since the Camp David Accords is huge, right? I think it's like $8 billion or $11 billion. I forget exactly how much it is. Um, but I personally think that in this current situation, the high command, uh, made a move that the Americans did not expect. This was not expected by the U.S. administration, or at least the timing was not expected. So I think that now a very small rift has opened up in the relationship between the United States administration ναι, λοιπόν, αυτό που είπε είναι ότι ιστορικά υπάρχουν πάρα πολλοί δεσμοί μεταξύ του Αιγυπτιακού στρατού και της Αμερικάνικης κυβέρνησης εδώ και πάρα πολλά χρόνια και θεσμικά και ιστορικά και οικονομικά. Η Αμερικάνικη κυβέρνηση δίνει βοήθεια, στρατιωτική βοήθεια στον Αιγυπτιακό στρατό, είπε για 8 δις, νομίζω ότι είναι 1,3, δεν είμαι σίγουρο, 1,8. Ε, οπότε, μάλλον αυτό είναι από τη μια αλήθεια όντω, αλλά απ' την άλλη, αυτό που έκανε ο Γεωργιακό στρατό εκείνη την ημέρα ήταν κάτι που δεν τον περίμεναν και δεν το ήθελαν οι Αμερικανοί, με αποτέλεσμα να υπάρξει ένα άνοιγμα, μια, ένα, ένα ρήγμα στη σχέση των δύο, το οποίο από εδώ και πέρα δεν ξέρουμε πώ θα εξελιχθεί. As an American citizen, I would like to say how much of a veil there now is over the thinking within the foreign policy establishment and the military establishment in the U.S. And very importantly, that's because of this coup d'etat where you have huge amounts of money going into privatized contracting that is, is now a significant part of the U.S. Uh, economy. And so in many ways the foreign policy establishment, say of the State Department, has lost control. So it's very hard to know what's actually happening. That there are conflicting parts within. Yeah, αυτό που λέει είναι πολύ σημαντικό. I think it's a very important point. Ότι ακριβώς αυτό που εξήγησε στην ομιλία της, ότι στην ουσία στην Αμερική έχει συμβεί ένα πραξικόπημα στο οποίο ιδιωτικά συμφέροντα επιχειρήσεων στρατιωτικών, στην ουσία παραστρατιωτικών οργανώσεων, με έναν τρόπο δηλαδή εταιριών, στρατιωτικών εταιριών, έχουν, ε, έχουν παρισφύσει στην απόφαση, στον τρόπο με τον οποίο η Αμερικάνη κυβέρνηση αποφασίζει για αυτά που κάνει στο εξωτερικό, δεν είναι πολύ εύκολο σήμερα να καταλάβει κανεί αν υπάρχει μια ξεκάθαρη άποψη για την Αμερικάνη κυβέρνηση θέλει να κάνει σε κάθε χώρα στον κόσμο, γιατί ακριβώ η ιδιωτικοποίηση αυτή τη Στρατιωτική δύναμη των ΗΠΑ έχει στην ουσία σπάσει το μονοπόλιο τη κυβέρνηση στην απόφασή τη. Γι' αυτό κανεί ακριβώ δεν μπορεί να ξέρει αν όντω αυτό που κάνει η Αμερικανική κυβέρνηση είναι αυτό που γίνεται κιόλα και σε αυτέ τι χώρε. And I can't say strongly enough how inspired many Americans were by seeing the people rise up again. And I think many Americans heard echoes of their own revolution, just even the language. And so I think partly the establishment in the U.S. is afraid of an uprising from the American people also, because the Occupy movement came after that. And people are very angry at all the money going into the military, 
when there our schools are being closed down. Ναι, επίσης είπε ότι επειδή ο Αμερικανικός λαός είχε πάρα πολύ εμπνευστεί από αυτή την εξέγερση στην Αίγυπτο, η Αμερικάνικη κυβέρνηση φοβάται κιόλας ότι μία άμεση σύνδεσή της με το στρατό, μία άμεση τέλος πάντων σύνδεση με αυτά που συμβαίνουν ενάντια στο λαό στην Αίγυπτο, θα μπορούσε να δημιουργήσει ένα κίνημα στην υποστήριξη στην Αμερική και ίσως, γιατί όχι, κάτι αντίστοιχο με αυτό που έγινε με το Occupy Wall Street, στην ουσία όλο αυτό το κίνημα που έγινε πέρσι, σαν αποτέλεσμα της συμπάθεια και της έμπνευση από τα κινήματα στη Μέση Ανατολή και στην Ευρώπη. Γι' αυτό το λόγο είναι πολύ φοβισμένη και πολύ προσεκτική στο πώς ακριβώς θα αντιμετωπίσει την Αιγυπτιακή κατάσταση, γιατί φοβάται τον ίδιο του στο λαό. that we all agree maybe here that uh, the capitalist state has three major pillars. That's the army, the police, and the justice, you know, the courts. In that case, uh, what is happening in Egypt? Is it that the army intervened in order to protect what the people want? Or in typical fashion, the army intervened to protect the capitalist state? I would say both. <laughs> but to do what they did at this point. A, because this is what people expected them to do. And B, because if they didn't do anything, they would have failed to protect their own interests, which were tied up with uh, not allowing the country to slip into chaos and bloodshed, right? which is what probably would have happened if they hadn't intervened. Ναι, Τα συμφανές ότι στηρίζει γενικά το πραξικόπημα, γιατί είναι πραξικόπημα, η κατάλυση κάθε κοινοβουλίου συνιστά πραξικόπημα. Και μάλιστα των πιο αντιδραστικών κύκλων των πολιτικών και των οικονομικών στο εσωτερικό κάθε χώρα. Εδώ όσες φορές έγιναν αυτά, έγιναν με αυτούς τους όρους και με αυτές τις αναλογίες. Υπάρχει, υπάρχει όμως δήλωση του Υπουργείου Εξωτερικών, η οποία είναι φως φανάρι ότι στηρίζει και μάλιστα επικρίνει και καταδικάζει, ας πούμε, τη βία των, των δεν είμαι ορσικός, προς Θεού, έτσι. Αλλά, τουλάχιστον πρέπει να είμαστε σαφείς με κάποια γεγονότα. Και τα γεγονότα είναι αυτά. Να τα μεταφράσω. Ε? Actually, what the U.S. support for what people are calling a coup was not evident from the very beginning. They spent very much as with the Mubarak days, the 18 days, they spent a full four, four or five days insisting that, you know, they were going to look into whether this was a coup or not, and they had State Department lawyers working on it. And um, the language that they were using, even before the armies communicate, when Ann Patterson, the ambassador to Egypt, um, actually came out at a, at a conference at the Ibn Khaldun Center and said, you know, and uh, said that the demonstrations that were planned for June 30 were a big mistake and that, you know, people should refrain from going out onto the streets because this was not conducive to a sort of, you know, democratic and, um, you know, peaceful way of resolving the problems in Egypt and so forth. I mean, it was very clear to most Egyptians even before June 30 and, and July 2nd that the U.S. administration was terrified of June 30. 
that they were fully supporting the Muslim Brotherhood, and that they spent days, as I said, before they arrived at this conclusion that, well, this was not a coup and this was a democratic sort of, uh, you know, movement in the country. So I, I, I disagree with you that they immediately came out and supported what the, what the military had, had done. You know, there was conflict or disagreement within power circles in the United States. The U.S. Congress, um, particularly a, a, re a Republican faction within the U.S. Congress, was supportive of June 30 from the very beginning and was cons had consistently been uh, hostile to the Muslim Brotherhood government. Now, these are Republicans in the U.S. political system, as opposed to the Obama administration, which all along had been supporting the Muslim Brotherhood. <laughs> Γκαμάλ, από τον Νάσερ, ευχαριστώ. Τον οποίο ε, τον αγάπησε όχι μόνο ο λαό Αιγύπτου αλλά και όλο ο αραβικό κόσμο, ήταν από τους ηγέτες του ηγέτε του κινήματο των αδέσμευτων. Δηλαδή, ο στρατό είναι και αυτό ιστορικά και αυτό που είπαμε πριν, ότι είναι πραγματικά οι στρατηγοί έτσι παίρνουν χρήματα κατευθείαν από την Αμερική. Δεν σημαίνει ότι ιστορικά ο στρατό έχει συνδεθεί με κάτι κακό όπω έχει συνδεθεί στην Ελλάδα με το πραξικόπημα. Και τον Μπαθ. Και τον Μπαθ, φυσικά. Και στη Συρία. Και απ' την άλλη, οι αδελφοί μουσουλμάνοι επίση, να πούμε και αυτό για όσον αφορά για αυτό που λέμε ότι είναι από το αμερικανοκίνητη η όλη ιστορία που συμβαίνει αυτή τη στιγμή, οι αδελφοί μουσουλμάνοι και ο Μόρση ο ίδιο είχε δηλώσει μέρε πριν πέσει ε, ότι βλέπει θετικά το ενδεχόμενο να παρέμβει ο Αιγυπτιακό στρατό εν δυνάμει στη Συρία. Για να στηρίξει του αδελφού μουσουλμάνου εκεί, οι οποίοι στηρίζονται αυτή τη στιγμή από του Αμερικανού. Οπότε γενικά το πράγμα είναι λίγο μπερδεμένο, έτσι. Όχι, σας αφήνω. He talked about jihad in Syria. And this, I think, this is at the point at which the army leadership was like, oh shit. You know, <laughs> what, it, because there was no communication between the presidency and the army at this point. And um, I think that this was one of the reasons why the army decided to act, quite apart from the fact that there were millions of people coming out onto the street. Because it suddenly became a question of, Regional politics and national security and borders, you know. Is it part of the American who, at this moment, de facto, is under the Assad? So, what can be said? For what reason do the Americans want to take the position of Morse? No, as we have seen this drama. On the other hand, exactly what he says is that the Stratos, on the other hand, decided to intervene and all for a particular reason, not only because of the Lao Tsai on the road, but because he believed that the drama was going to be very strong. After the statement of the Morse about Syria, that he would have to face a decision. Ε, τοπικό, έναν μάλλον όχι τοπικό, της περιοχής, ε, μία, ε, μία επέμβαση. Ο πόλεμος αυτός γίνεται στην ουσία πόλεμος της περιοχής ολόκληρης και δεν ήθελε να μπει σε αυτή την περιπέτεια. People in the audience a question. Since we have all come from many different countries to try to find common ground, do you have suggestions about what we can go back to our countries with as, as a kind of common platform that we can all stand against on as we, as we work against very similar problems. If you don't have a question, I'll ask you a question. To you, if you have come from all different countries and countries, we are all the same problems and the same problems. If you have any advice, 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 σε όλο αυτό, αυτό κόσμο ο οποίος έχει έρθει και αντιμετωπίζει προβλήματα. Φαντάζομαι μάλλον ότι αυτό σημαίνει ότι θεωρεί ότι στην Ελλάδα το... Ας το πούμε. Η ουσία του προβλήματος είναι η ενέργεια. Πρέπει να είναι διαχωρισμός του κράτους από την ενέργεια. Αυτή τη στιγμή η Αμερική έχει 12 ευρώ τώρα και τα 10 είναι στον κόλπο. Τι κάνει η κυβέρνηση. To differentiate between the state and the energy, I think he speaks about the United States of America. He says that the United States Army possesses 12 aircraft carriers, and out of which now, today, 10 of them are in the Gulf. What are they doing there? Yeah. Yeah. 
and then they will finalize with the sun tars and the brick and the soils of North America. <laughs> Over the next couple days, I and my colleague here, who is an activist working in coal mining areas all across US, there are many communities who are being devastated by mining, oil, fracking. And we are now at the end of fossil fuels, so now these huge corporations like feudal lords are pushing extreme extraction that is already displacing many people in the US. But we are in working with groups who are rising up to fight that. So I think there's much common ground we can build. The groups who are fighting um, in the Gulf of Louisiana, where the oil spills are causing cancer. Right, but I'm saying there's a connection in the U.S. There's struggles. I mean, in the coal fields, uh, babies are being born deformed, miscarriages, uh, mental retardation from the pollution. So I think we need to make a common, make solidarity on energy issues. I think that's one of the most powerful things we could do. Ναι, λέει ακριβώς ότι, σας καταλάβατε μόνο γιατί μιλάτε, αλλά γενικά μεταφράζω, ε, συντονιστικές ομάδες ηθαγενών οι οποίοι παλεύουν ενάντια σε αυτές, αφού του είδους τις εξορίξεις, υπάρχουν πάρα πολλοί τέτοιοι αγώνες αυτή τη στιγμή στην Αμερική, ε, δυναμούν όλο και περισσότερο. Υπάρχει αυτή τη στιγμή ε, αυτό το κίνημα ενάντια σε εξορίξεις και ενάντια στην ε, επιθετική μορφή εξόριξη, ας πούμε, ενέργειας, πέρα το πετρέλαιο, παντού σε όλο τον κόσμο. Και αυτό πρέπει να κάνουμε είναι στην ουσία να βρούμε ένα κοινό τρόπο, ένα κοινό μέτωπο για να σταματήσουμε αυτό το που συμβαίνει, που συμβαίνει όμως, παντού δεν συμβαίνει μόνο στην Ελλάδα, συμβαίνει, δεν συμβαίνει μόνο στον, στον κόλπο του Μεξικού, αλλά συμβαίνει και στην καρδιά της Αμερικάνικης Υπήρου. It is not easy to say about the future for the Gezi Park because, first of all, our president doesn't have a continuous political line. Every day he is changing his discourses, and we are really getting hard times to analyze his uh, discourses. I mean, every day he is changing his mind. Okay. And secondly, I think in Gezi Park was a very hopeful thing because. I see that, I mean, I just will share one of my story. I mean, I was politically active in a leftist group for, you know, 10 years, for the last 10 years, and I feel detached for the last three years because there was a kind of interrogations from uh, listenings and, you know, many um, courtyards against my political group. And, 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 and like me, many leftist people were not in the in the forefronts of the barricades. 
because we are really small and we are not really have a strong power to, to continue. But I see that in the Gezi Park, if you show your aim and effort clearly, and and if it's a kind of very much common idea, like a tree, a tree can be a real symbol of a common. Like we see that people can be in the streets for a tree, and it is. It is going about the clash between Islamist versus secular. If you really find the, the common ground against capitalism, I mean, people can go to the street. And, and people who were fighting in the barricades, in the forefront with the police, were, were football supporters and were teenage boys and girls, like 14 years old, 15 years old. I was really couldn't be able to believe. like. So shortly, I mean, I think if you find a real common point, if you really emphasize the, the common, people will go beyond the dichotomies. So th this is my short answer. Has become very skillful at public relations campaigns to use identity politics, religion, race, even gender now, to manipulate people. And Barack Obama epitomizes that as if he's a progressive force because of the identity politics. So I think we all have to come together in a much more radical and positive way to put forth a common vision of development, not in the Marxist sense of reclaiming the means of production, but reclaiming nature's powers of regeneration against this fossil fuel plutocracy. That it's, it's a new kind of revolution that takes much different imagination and vision, looking for very common things, because they will always be able to divide us. And it started to happen with Occupy Wall Street. And, you know, for a very long time, people were just desperately trying to figure out why. You know, the U.S. generally tends to be fairly pragmatic when it comes to um, crisis situations like this, and they generally know which way the wind is flowing, blowing in time, and they will, you know, as happened with the Mubarak regime. But this time around, unlike with the Mubarak regime, the U.S. administration actually put so much more effort into propping up this... The, the 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 former I was going to say current the former regime that you know people were really astonished why 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 and I think the answer to that which is on a different subject lies in actually U S strategy in the entire region and it's not really about Egypt in the end it's about the broader region it's about Syria it's about Libya it's about um, you know the sort of geopolitics of uh, sectarianism and civil war that the U.S. would like to see um, happen in the region as a whole, so. <laughs> With money that is desperately needed for health and education, the only justification they have is that there are jihadi Muslim terrorists out there, and if the Egyptian people can stand up and the Turkish people stand up and show that they aren't crazy fundamentalists and, and they aren't enemies, then the military has no rationale and that whole system collapses, which is now a big crony scheme. We used to have communists we could fight. Then we had the jihadis, thanks to September 11th, we would have to fundamentally reclaim our government. And so it's very simple in the US. The US needs conflict, in the, I mean the military needs conflict in the, in the Middle East to maintain that regime.